Esther here and today I have my little sidekick here to help me with this video. I wanted to share with you how I've kept my house clean during a really bad flare up. So for those of you who haven't been here before or don't know my whole story, I have several chronic illnesses including POTS, SIBO, endometriosis, PCOS, fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue syndrome, Hashimoto's disease, uh, mast cell activation syndrome. I have a lot of problems. And I'm currently 34 weeks pregnant. So I'm super pregnant. I have been really anemic this pregnancy, had absolutely no energy at all. And so keeping my house clean has been a challenge. But I've done some things in preparation for this flare up. Didn't know what's happening, of course, but did some things on accident to prepare that have really helped me keep my house cleaner. And honestly, I feel like I've done a really good job. Considering the other times I've had bad flares, my house turns into a disaster. It's disgusting. Now, there's a difference between clean and tidy. As you can see, there's toys everywhere. I'm actually in the toy room right now. Um, there is a difference between clean and tidy. So I have been able to keep my house clean. As in, I don't have nasty toilets and I get my dishes done, those kinds of things. But that doesn't mean it's like perfectly tidy all the time. But there's not dust, there's not that is background music. Thanks. We like it. Um, <laughs> anyways, we're gonna have some background music here because that is just how we do it on my channel. Sometimes I can do videos while she naps, but one thing before we get started is I want to tell you a little analogy that helps me when I'm having a bad day. So our energy level is like this, I'm gonna choose this, bottle of water, okay? We have, if we take the water as our energy, we only have so much water, so much energy during our day, right? So if a normal person who doesn't have chronic fatigue or chronic pain has this much energy for the whole water bottle, then, me with chronic fatigue and pain might have this much energy in my day. So I have a lot less energy to give. So I have to be more careful on normal days. Then I have a flare up and I'm down here and I'm pregnant and I'm down here. And I have very little, very little energy to work with during a flare up. And I know you guys who deal with um, chronic illness and bad flares feel the same way where some days this is all you got. And some days you don't wanna give any to cleaning and that's totally fine. I'm not telling you have to keep a clean house while you're having a bad flare. I'm just making this video for you if you want to. So for me, it helps me mentally so much to have a clean house. I would prefer to have a clean house and feel mentally sane. It helps me be a better mom than having this disaster, disgusting house and trying to take care of her and it just makes me grumpy and it makes me feel good. So you do not have to clean your house while you're having a flare, but if you want the tips, these are the ones for you. So let's start with things for the whole house. And all of these things that I'm going to teach you will help you use as little of that energy, that water in your energy cup, a little of that energy as possible. Okay, so my first tip has helped me immensely. It is to have your house organized, have a place for everything and have everything in its place. So this is something you can't do during a flare. Of course, that would be impossible. Well, I don't know, would be impossible for me. <laughs> um, but before I had a flare, I was actually having a couple months of feeling really good. And it just so happened that we um, ended, ended up expanding our space. We used to rent out our basement. So we expanded our space. I organized my entire house. Like it is so organized. Everything has a place. All of her toys have a place. Um, everything in my kitchen has a place. I even purchased a few new like new items. I purchased some bins you're gonna see. I have bins all over my house. I love bins, especially for kids stuff. I purchased a new um, kind of cabinet thing for our kitchen because we were running out of room there. But I found a place for everything. If I didn't have a place for it, I got rid of it. And I will do videos. I've had people ask me, how do you get rid of stuff? <laughs> because sometimes I, okay, I used to be a hoarder, you guys, like big time. Like ask anyone who has ever lived with me. My room was always a disaster. I would not get rid of anything. 
I kept everything thinking that I would need it one day. Now I get rid of things. I would much rather buy it again two months later and get rid of it now <laughs> than have it cluttering up my house. So I got rid of a ton of stuff. If it didn't have a place, I got rid of it. And if I wanted to keep it, I had to find a place for it. So my whole house is organized and I will show you in a later video how I've organized my house for easy cleanup. If you guys are interested in that, let me know in the comments below how I organized it. I'm happy to do a video like that for you. But having it organized is huge. And then what you need to do is put things back where they go when you're done. And I know that sounds so simple, but for me, that's hard sometimes. I have a really hard time putting stuff back after I use it. And so having my house organized has actually helped me do that because I know where things go. Before it was just like, oh, I'm just gonna throw this in my daughter's room because it's hers and, and her room would become a mess. And then I just throw it in our room. Anyway, if, if everything in my house doesn't have an exact place where I know exactly where it goes, I just end up throwing it random places. So not only do you need to have a place for everything, you need to put it back after you use it. This next tip is for the times where you don't put in bag everything you need. I have what I call a misfit bin in every room. So here's my misfit bin in our toy room. So what a misfit bin, ooh, my camera is falling. What a misfit bin is, is random stuff that I find now embarrassing. This is mostly my stuff. Oh, this stays in here. But I have like eyebrow kit and lipstick and flash drives. Random stuff goes in that bin, okay? And this is when I don't have the energy or the time or the motivation to take something that I even, I know where it goes, don't have the energy to put it back where it goes. And so I have a misfit bin in every room for those days where I don't have the energy to walk into the other room and put it in. I throw everything that doesn't belong in the toy room in here. Of course, if it's bigger than that, then I have to go put it away right away. But if it fits in that bin, it goes in right there. And then on a day where I'm feeling better, I take those bins around the house and I put them away. So I have one in every single room. Another thing you want in every room is a garbage can. I put a garbage can in every room, a small one. There's a big one in the kitchen. Every other room has a small one. Bathrooms, bedrooms, laundry room, playroom. We have a garbage in every one. And then I would say about once a week or so, I take a big garbage sack, a big, what are they called? Brain fog, you know what I'm talking about. A big sack that you put garbage in and I walk around and I dump out every garbage out of every room into that bag because there's small garbages, I can do that. And then I take out the kitchen garbage with it and boom, super easy. My next tip is that you don't need to clean everything all at once. Spread it out throughout the day if you need to. Yes, because sometimes these little ones jump on your back, huh? And you don't have time to clean right then. So for me, I'll do dishes three times a day. I spread out my dishes throughout the day because standing and doing dishes is really hard for me. So if there's something that's hard for you, spread it out throughout your day. Maybe you vacuum one room in the first half of your day and then the second half of your day, vacuum another room. Stuff like that. You don't have to do it all at once. Spread it out. My next tip is... <laughs> to ask for help. So ask your husband, your spouse for help. Ask your kids for help if they're old enough. And not only can you ask for help from people, adults or um, people who can, but I have taught my 20 month old daughter, yes, you're very smart, huh? I have taught her how to help me clean. She knows how to empty the, her dishes. I put all of her all of her dishes in easy access of her. So not only can she get to them easily, but she can also, oh my goodness, child. <laughs> she can get to her dishes easy. So if I make her dinner, I can say, hey, go get a plate and a spoon. Can you go get a plate? Go get a plate. Will you go get one? Oh, you're like, what? We're not eating. But <laughs> she does know how to do that. And then she also will put her plates and bowls away when I'm emptying the dishwasher. I'll pull hers out, she knows where to put them at 20, month old, 20 months old. She also helps me put away toys. I have 
a system in here. When we get to the toy room, I will show you, but she helps me put away toys with a really easy system. So teach your kids young, even a one-year-old can help you clean. And even if sometimes they make it a little bit harder in the long run, it will make it so much better if you have them help you clean. My next tip is to prioritize what you think is most important. So for me, I think the priorities are the things that make my house gross. So once a week I clean the toilets, no matter what. I do the dishes every single day. No matter what, I do the dishes every day and I vacuum every day. And the reason vacuum is so important to me is one, we have animals. <laughs> but I have allergies from my mast cell activation syndrome and my vacuum, you guys, is the best thing in the world. Not sponsored, but Dyson V11 animal vacuum has changed my life. I love it so much. Not only does it suction way better than any other vacuum I've ever had, I have to empty it after every room because it's so full of dust. It grosses me out that I used to not get that much out of my carpet, but so much dust in there. My allergies are 10 times better when I vacuum with my Dyson than they were with my old vacuum. It's also super light, and so it doesn't take a lot of energy to vacuum, and I can just quickly vacuum a room. You don't have to plug it in while you're vacuuming, and I've heard people say theirs doesn't, their battery doesn't last very long. I've never had it die on me unless I forgot to plug it in because um, I plug it in after I'm done. But I don't, <laughs> I don't have to plug it in while I'm actually using it. And I've never had it die because I can't vacuum that long, so I don't know. Um, and my house isn't super big either. But that, that vacuum has helped me vacuum every single day when before it was a huge pain in the butt to vacuum. I hated vacuuming. Took all of my energy just to vacuum one room. Now I do it quickly and easily. I even vacuum the stairs every day. Um, super easy to vacuum. So I vacuum my whole house every single day. <laughs> and you can help me too. You like to vacuum, huh? Yeah. It's light enough she can help. I get really nervous about her breaking it because it's like my third baby. <laughs> I have her, I have my baby in my belly, and then I have my Dyson vacuum. So I get nervous about her helping me, but she does like to help vacuum as well. Okay, next thing is to simplify your decor. We talked about simplifying your stuff, making sure you have a place for everything. I think I need to do a whole series on minimal videos. Now, I'm not a minimalist as like the minimalists who have like three shirts and that's not how I am, but I've definitely gone from super hoarder to a much more minimal lifestyle. To me, minimal means getting rid of stuff that you don't absolutely love, or as Marie, what is her name, Marie? I don't know her name. Anyway, um, the one lady who says it, <laughs> if it doesn't spark joy, don't keep it. That has, like, really, it just makes such a big difference to only keep things in your house that spark joy, like this little one, huh? You spark joy for me, don't you? Don't you? Anyways, um, to me, minimal means getting rid of things that you don't absolutely love or need. And so I will do a whole series of videos on that, including how I organize my house later. But, oh man, it has helped me so much to minimize not only my stuff, but my decor. My decor is so much more minimal than it used to be. <laughs> She's trying to touch my camera. Come on this side. My decor, I used to just like to have the entire wall filled with decor and have decorations all over my house. And now we are very, very minimal. And that has helped me a lot. It makes it look cleaner when it is clean and you don't get dust on a bunch of surfaces anymore. One more overall house tip is to skip the things that are unnecessary. So skip anything that doesn't make your house cleaner, but just makes it like tidy, right? So I typically don't clean the toy room, as in I don't tidy up all the toys every day, especially during a flare. In fact, uh, it's probably the last thing that I really do. It's not the last thing. Okay, you're gonna see at the end of this video, the last thing that I do, I'll save that for you. So it's really good. You're, I'm embarrassed to even show you, but cleaning the toy room is, or tidying the toy room, cleaning it. I try to vacuum it daily and keep it clean, but I don't necessarily tidy up all of her toys every day. Um, and then making the bed is another one for me that 
makes it makes me feel good when I make my bed. In fact, I actually made it today because I'm feeling a little bit better because I'm making this than I have, which is why I'm filming today because the other days I could not clean and film. That just sounded impossible. So I did actually make my bed today, but typically I don't make my bed when I'm having a bad flare because it's just one piece of energy that I don't want to give and it doesn't make my house cleaner. It just makes it tidier, right? So anything that to me is more of a tidy thing, not an actual cleaning thing, I skip it. Let's move on to the kitchen. Okay, so the first thing is something that I'm really bad at and I just haven't been very good at. And you'll see I actually have quite a few dishes today, <laughs> but is washing your dish right after and putting it right in the dishwasher. So you don't have to do a whole pile of dishes or letting things soak. That is something I do after. If I use a pot or pan or something that needs to soak, I will immediately soak it right after using it. So either put it in the sink to soak immediately or try to put it in the dishwasher immediately. Again, not perfect. I'm <laughs> Not very good. The other thing is when you're having a flare is to make simple food that doesn't use a bunch of pots and pans and things that you have to clean. Because I know for me, I cook, whenever I cook like a nice meal, I use every pan and pot in my kitchen <laughs> and then I have a lot to clean up. And so um, making simpler meals, making quick and easy meals, not only saves you the energy during the meal, but it also saves you energy after when you're doing cleanup. So do sheet pan meals, or um, if you guys are interested, I will, once I'm not pregnant anymore, um, and I have a little bit more time on my hands and energy, I will do some cooking videos if you guys want some like easy paleo meals and stuff, let me know in the comments below and I would be happy to make some videos like that for you. But making simple, quick meals that don't use a lot of dishes or using paper plates or going out to eat. Um, now that depends on how you wanna spend your budget. Now I believe personally that you have money for anything um, but not everything. And now that doesn't mean you can afford a, you know, a gigantic house if you don't make enough money for it, stuff like that. But I mean like the simple day-to-day -day stuff, you can choose how you wanna spend your money. So you can choose how you wanna spend your money, of course, if you have the money and you want to spend it, go out to eat while you're having a big flare so you don't have to worry about dishes at all. Um, use paper plates and paper utensils. That is a little bit more expensive, but it might be worth it, especially if it's only for a week or two of using paper plates and paper utensils, it's not gonna be that expensive. So those are options as well to limit your dishes. And then my last tip is kind of what I already told you, which is I have my, my child, if I have more kids, when I have more kids and they're old enough, have kids help you unload the dishwasher. I have her put away all of her plates, bowls, and utensils, and she loves it. She even helps me put them in the dishwasher, and it makes things go much easier for me. Also, having a pet, a dog, has helped me keep my house cleaner because this little one spills food everywhere all the time, and so it helps me keep my floors a lot cleaner because my dog will just sit under my daughter's chair wherever she's sitting to eat and just eats whatever she drops on the floor. So having a pet, even though there are some things about having a pet that might take more energy, cleaning your kitchen is not one of them. They definitely help you keep your kitchen cleaner. Okay, moving along to the living room. Okay, the, this room I feel like gets dirty so quickly, so easily, especially when you have kids. And the biggest thing is simplifying decor, simplifying what's in here so you don't have as much stuff. I used to have a ton of stuff in here, cluttered it up. Um, we got a toy room, which has been a huge game changer. If you have the option for that, definitely do it. I totally understand that you might not. And I will still share tips as if you don't have a toy room because we just barely got one like a few months ago and it's been, it's been amazing. But if you don't have a place for your kids toys, that's easy for them to clean up. So in here, my daughter still brings toys in here, of course. So we have this ottoman in here and we keep a bunch of toys in here. And usually I'll like every once in a while when I'm feeling good, I'll move the toys back into her playroom. And then she just like, on her own will bring stuff out here, right? Bring stuff out. And so I have this place for when she does bring them out and I don't have the energy to take them back to the playroom, I throw them in this ottoman and then I just put the lid of the ottoman on and boom, it's clean, super easy. Next thing, I know we already talked about this, but you guys, I can't talk about enough. Get yourself a Dyson vacuum. Uh, again, mine is the Dyson V11 Animal. It's upside down, but I'll link it in the description below. <sighs> 
changed my life. I vacuum this room and my couch every single day. We have a gigantic couch, which I love. It helps me so much to just be comfortable, but it is something I need to, do need to vacuum every single day, especially with animals and kids, but it's super easy. It takes me three seconds with this Dyson. And one other thing with vacuuming every day is that when I prioritize vacuum every day, it helps me to keep the floors cleaner because I know, okay, I'm going to have to vacuum later today. I don't want to have a bunch of toys and stuff all over the floor. So I will just kind of naturally keep it cleaner when I just plan on vacuuming every day. And we are back in the toy room. So my tips for the toys, not necessarily the toy room. One, if you have a place where you can put toys where they're their own space, whether it's in the kid's bedroom or in an, a dedicated toy room or maybe corner or area of the house, I highly recommend it if you have the space for it. If not, I still have some tips for you. One is to have bins. I love, you can see some of my bins right here. I love bins for toys. I found these at Walmart. I had bigger ones I got from Ikea. I like these small Walmart ones even better because not that much fits in them and I feel like they are they get less unorganized because ours are pretty organized. Uh, of course, we have kind of random bins in there too, or just random stuff. Or when she's cleaning up, I try not to move stuff where she puts it because I want her to learn to clean up her own stuff and, and not make her think she did anything wrong by cleaning. And so sometimes things get put in different bins, but having them smaller, it's easier for her to know where things go and it's she can clean up on her own. I am almost always there to help her. I'm not sure if I'll get any clips of her actually helping me clean because, you know, I feel like whenever I pull the camera out, she doesn't actually do it, but she does know how to help me clean up and put stuff back in the bins. And especially as she gets older, it'll be even easier for her to clean up her toys because they all have a place to go. And then my next tip, especially if you don't have a dedicated toy room, this is something that one of my friends um, suggested to me and it's been huge. So we have a closet full of bins, which right now, honestly, we've kind of gotten them out and made a bit of a mess in here. But usually I only keep these four. So we have books and then all these three change. Usually it's books, stuffed animals, and then these two will change, and then sometimes I'll change out that bottom one. So besides the big stuff, these we change out every couple of weeks or every week when she seems to get bored of them. And it's really fun for her because it's like she gets new toys. So if you don't have a toy room, take most of your toys and put them in some kind of storage, whether it's in some closet where they can't get to them or, or they don't know where they are. Um, in your garage if you have one. Find a place to store most of the toys and only keep a few out at a time. And then every once in a while switch them out and it's like they get new toys so it's fun for them. But then you have less to clean up while um, they are actually playing with the toys because they have less that they can actually get out if that makes sense. Because I used to keep all of her toys in the living room and I didn't like to get rid of toys as much as my stuff just because you know people would give her stuff. Oh bless you baby. And it's harder for me to get rid of her toys just not knowing whether she'll like it later or whether my next baby will like it. And so it just ended up getting too cluttered. But what we would do is just move some of them into our shed and then switch them out every couple weeks or so. And it was fun for her and it's easier for me. And then only allow non-sticky snacks in um, places other than your kitchen. So right now she's having these little veggie straws. Are they yummy? <laughs> she's eating veggie straws right now and um they don't get sticky if she drops one on the floor either my dog eats it or i can vacuum it up super easy so have things like crackers and snacks in other rooms if you allow that in other rooms um i personally do because i like to snack <laughs> um, but having the sticky things only in the kitchen and then anytime you have toys or anything that needs to be cleaned up have them in a place where you can sit down. It's another reason why I like bins is because I can sit and put all of the toys in, which uses a lot less energy than standing up or bending over. And so I try to make everything in my house available for me to put away while sitting, except the kitchen, things in there that I want high for my children not to get to, of course. Everything else I try to put in a place where I can sit down, throw them all in the bin and put them away because sitting is so much easier than standing. Okay friends, we have moved on to the bathroom. I don't really know where to sit or stand to do this one because my bathroom's kind of small. But um, my tips for in here 
is to choose one thing a day or every couple days how I mean my bathrooms are pretty small typically choose one thing a day and I have two bathrooms in my house and maybe it's upstairs bathroom wipe down the counters upstairs bathroom wipe off the mirror downstairs bathroom clean the toilet stuff like that choose one thing a day to do so that my bathroom doesn't get disgusting but it's not a ton of energy for me to do and then I also keep cleaning supplies in both bathrooms so I don't have to haul around the cleaning supplies to different bathrooms and then for the shower my uh tip is to clean it while you're already in it so I have a hard time taking showers as is and so this is something that does is a little bit hard for me because I have pots and standing without my compression socks on is not fun so I typically will like wash the tub while I'm sitting down in the shower and then I'll just do a quick kind of wipe down and so doing it while you're already in it is much much easier and then for everything else just choose one thing a day one small thing so that after the full week you have gotten you you've cleaned every surface and again it might not be perfectly tidy every time but you've at least cleaned the toilet once a week you've at least wiped down the countertop once a week you've at least cleaned the mirror once a week or whatever other surfaces you have in your bathroom as for the bedroom my only thing i would say besides the overall tips i had vacuum once a day and don't make your bed is to pick up all everything off the floor once a day. If you do it once a day, it's not as big of a deal. If you let it pile up, it's the same thing with dishes. It's why I do the dishes multiple times a day is because if I let them pile up, I physically cannot get to them. It's just way too big of a project for me. So same thing with the floor. If once a day, I pick up all the, the clothes. I am so bad at throwing my clothes on the floor. Pick up one, the clothes once a day and put them in the hamper immediately. Anything else that gets on the floor in the bedrooms, pick it up once a day. It'll be much easier than if you leave it for the next day because then you have double. And if you have double, you're probably not gonna do it, at least if you're like me. And then you're gonna leave it another day. So. That's what I would suggest for your bedrooms. Now let's move on to my least favorite task in all the world, which is laundry. So I feel like washing laundry is super easy. I have extra like tubs that I m make sure are always empty to move laundry over um, because I have a front loading washer. And so it's easier for me to just pull everything out into the bin, move it over and then put it in the dryer. Um, and then my only other tip for actually cleaning your laundry is to have it separated when you first put it in the hamper. So I have a, a hamper that has three sections, super cheap. What? She sounds like she's crying or like complaining. She's just laughing back there. Anyway, um, I have a hamper that I got super cheap at, at home for probably like 12 bucks and one section I do uh, thick things like towels, blankets, coats. One section is colors and the other section is whites. And when I t put them in the hamper, I immediately separate them. So I don't have to go through the energy of doing that later because just doing it for two items is so much easier than for all of your laundry. So separate it right away. So then when you throw it in the washer, all you have to do is pick it up from the the right hamper and throw it all in there's no colors with the whites it works out really good now this is the most embarrassing part you guys is that i you know i'm just gonna show you okay you guys we are in my baby boy's room can you see uh, we got mu not much in here but well there's a lot in here actually <laughs> not much baby stuff in here um we're in my baby boy's room and this is my pile of laundry that I have not folded in two months, you guys. I have been sick for about two months. Okay, I've been sick for five years, but I've been really severely sick for two months, and I have not folded laundry in two months. So if you're watching this, you know chronic illness, you'll be like, oh my gosh, she has the worst advice. <laughs> Don't fold your laundry for two months. Well, to me, cleaning the laundry is a must do thing because I need to have clean clothes for my children, for my husband and me, but folding it seemed unnecessary. It was always the last thing on my to-do list and I never ended up having the energy for it. And even though this is not ideal at all, this is the truth. 
is that my husband, my daughter, and I, now there's only three of us, so it's really not that hard. If we had more kids, it would be a different story. And I do have tips for you. If you have more kids, or you don't have an entire room that's empty, <laughs> like our baby boy's room, who is still a few weeks away, but anyway, if you don't have an entire room to dedicate to <laughs> your clean laundry, then I do have tips for you. But because we only have a few of us, we <laughs> just come through this pile we pick out what we want to wear and because i'm pregnant there's only like three things that fit me anyway so they're always on the top because i'm washing them every day did you find an outfit and then what'd you get on your face silly girl and then she likes to come in and just like sort through the laundry and she'll say this is dada's this is mama's this is ari's anyways we have a lot of fun with it it's been quite an adventure but today is the day i'm going to actually put all this laundry away because i've told myself that every day for two months and today i'm actually going to do it but that is my terrible tip is to skip laundry because it's clean and it just doesn't have a place so if you want to do your laundry or you don't have the capacity to do it. I'm just going to set this right on my laundry. Also, there's a bike in here. It's fine. We'll get this room cleaned up, I promise, before baby boy comes. Anyway, if you want tips for doing it, my first tip is to separate it into, like I separate into my husband's, mine, and my daughter's um, first thing when it comes out of the laundry or when I have a gigantic pile. <laughs> and then I take a basket of each into each room. So of course my husband and I, we share a room. So I take both of our stuff into the same room, but my daughter, I just put all of her stuff in one basket, take it up to her room. And then I do the laundry in the room that, uh, that the clothes go in. And for all of us, I use bins. Now for my kids, especially for these little ones, until they can do their own laundry, I just don't see a point in folding their laundry. I just don't. I don't I don't see a point in it. So instead of folding my kids' laundry, I just throw it in a bin. And there's a shirt bin, a short sleeve shirt bin, a long sleeve shirt bin, a pants bin, right? They each have their like each kind of clothing has its own bin. And one that helps her to help me. She can help me do the laundry because we just throw it in a bin. <laughs> also helps because she likes to choose her own outfits and so she'll throw out all of the clothes, <laughs> choose a shirt, and then I can easily just put them back in. So I love bins for kids' clothes. They get wrinkled the second they put them on. They get dirty the second they put them on. Let's not touch that bike. Come here. Now I'm gonna have to rewash these clothes. You put them by the bike, you silly goose. Anyway, um, they, I just don't see a point in washing or in folding them. It doesn't make sense to me, especially baby stuff. I don't get it. So to me, I'm gonna say, until my kids can fold their clothes on their own, I'm not folding them, I'm just throwing them in a bin. For my husband and I stuff, I roll it up um, and then I put ours in a bin as well. And another reason I love using bins for clothes instead of a dresser is because I can sit on the floor, I can pull all the bins out and then I can put stuff in without even having to stand up. And I can put them in immediately after folding them instead of making piles and then having to take the piles out. Because what I used to do is I didn't have a problem folding the clothes. Like I would watch a show while I folded and I didn't have a problem with that, but then I had a hard time carrying the basket into our rooms and putting stuff away, which sounds dumb, but it just took a lot of my energy and I just never wanted to do it. And so just being able to pull all the bins out, throw all the clothes in the correct bin has been a game changer. All right, you guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. And I hope that it wasn't the worst advice you've ever heard. But these are tips that I, some of them I use every day no matter what because I live with chronic fatigue and chronic pain. Other of them, I mostly just use when I'm having a bad flare, like the laundry. I do try to do my laundry when I'm not having a bad flare, but I skip it when I'm not. So anyways, I hope this video was helpful for you. If you have any tips for me or anyone else, will you leave them in the comments below? If you have any other video ideas, I would love to hear them. I feel like I never run out of ideas, but I, my best videos come from the ones that you guys send me the ideas. So let me know in the comments below. If you have not yet subscribed to my channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button where we will learn all things chronic illness, how to be a human while living with chronic illness. So make sure you're subscribed and turn on that bell notification so you don't miss any videos and I will see you next time. Are right, you want to say bye-bye? 
say bye bye friends can you blow my kiss